Hi, I'm Michael from Advent Controls and in this video we're going to take a look at our one button GSM door entry system. The GSM intercom allows you to have a full two way conversation with callers to your property. If you put your mobile phone number in the intercom, no matter where you are in the world, you'll be able to speak to somebody calling at your front door. This is not only convenient for things like deliveries, but it's also a very good security feature in that if somebody is calling at your front door, you're going to know about it. Now the system uses the GSM mobile phone network, so all it requires to operate is a SIM card and some power. This means there's no cabling which is required to be installed from the intercom to a dedicated handset inside your house. It reduces the installation time and it reduces the installation cost and is much more simple and convenient to install. One very useful feature with our intercom is the internal aerial. Now this removes the necessity of you finding somewhere safe to mount an external aerial on the outside of your building and also running a coaxial cable from the aerial to your intercom. So not only does the internal aerial make our unit very quick and simple to physically install, to program our unit only requires a minimum of two SMS text messages. You need one SMS text message to tell the unit who is the administrator of the system and then just one more text message to set up one call number. You can have a lot of call numbers Typically, people will have up to five numbers, but there is space for 300 numbers in total if required. These numbers also include the call to open numbers. When the system is connected to a gate or a door, you can open the gate remotely using your phone. When the visitor calls you using the intercom, during the call, you can simply press the star key on your phone to open the gate. Additionally, any registered telephone number can call the intercom SIM card number which will also open the gate. So if we have a quick demonstration now, I set this unit to call our office. As soon as you press the button, the LED starts to flash. You can hear the phone is ringing. We just wait for an answer. Hello, I can control. Hi, June, it's Michael. Can you just press the star key on your phone, please? Certainly. And then as soon as she presses the star key, the relay is activated, the call is ended. And if it was connected to a gate or a door, the gate or a door would be opened. Everything you need to install the intercom, such as screws and a power supply, is included in the kit. And generally, installation can take as little as half of an hour. Included in the kit is a printed template to help the installer accurately drill holes for mounting and passing cables through the wall. The unit requires just two wires for power. They can be connected either way around to the two end VN terminals. The unit requires 12 to 24 volts AC or DC. If connecting to a gate controller or electric clock, the wires for these connections go to the COM and normally open relay output terminals as shown. Once the wiring is complete and the SIM card installed, we then refit the rear SIM card cover. The intercom is then placed within the hood, not forgetting to include the rear surface seal. The intercom is then screwed to the hood securing the unit to the wall. If required, we can now write on the illuminated name tag before we refit the front cover. Once this is secured, installation is complete. Once we've got the units installed, we then need to program the system. The first thing we need to do to program the system is to set up our master telephone number, which is effectively the administrator of the system and these numbers are allowed to make changes to the settings and the telephone numbers inside the intercom. To set this up as a master telephone number, we would send in a text message, the word master, followed by the telephone number of this phone, with a comma, and then the pin number of your intercom, which is written on the back panel, and on the quick start guide that you get with the intercom. Once we've done that, we can then use this phone to set up the call numbers. The call numbers are the numbers dialed when someone presses the button on the front of the intercom. They're dialed in the order that you add them. To add a call number, you send the word call num, followed by the telephone number you'd like to dial, followed by a full stop. We often get asked, are our intercoms suitable for outdoor use in the rain? Which is of course what they've been designed for. We have a rubber seal around the microphone. We have a seal all the way around the Mylar speaker. The enclosure has a seal all the way around the edge. And of course we have this big massive rubber seal which goes on the back face of the intercom which stops any water getting in that way. However, I thought we should put all these seals to the test and as this is August 2014, a month when you can't go on Facebook without seeing someone have a bucket of water poured over them, 
I thought we should subject our GSM intercoms to the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. I the two version. The Nokia 1650. Anything with that ringtone deserves to die. Oh god, it's still going. That won't last. And Now we try the hose, we'll give it 10 minutes with the hose and then we'll open it up and see what it looks like. Oh, I'll try not get the camera. How than it looks this. <laughs> of course, the rain doesn't normally come at it from this strange angle, but uh, so what we're trying to do is make it come from like above, which is what it's been designed for. And obviously in this country, we get a lot of sideways rain. So a little bit of that will simulate it without soaking me camera. Now trust me, that is one soggy intercom. I mean look at this little friend there, the hedgehog. So we're not really bothered what it looks like on the outside. Obviously it's bound to get wet in, in real life, but uh, we're, we want to see what it looks like on the inside just to see how much water's got in, if any, and see what effect it would have with prolonged water exposure. This is straight from the water, straight from the ice bucket challenge, the hose pipe, and just the general rain we've had today, which has been plentiful. Uh, take this cover off. Now clearly some water does get in from that cover, but it does it's designed to roll down the front. These are these have been cut in such a way that the perforations make the water roll down the front of it. So we don't get as much going into the speaker, which is what's behind it. Right, so despite the seal, there are some splashes of water. Now that's actually come from it's probably most likely come from when I've just pulled it apart there, but this bit down the bottom is would have fallen over when we took the ice buckets on it, so the, that bit of paper has gone wet and it's absorbed its way up the top but unfortunately when it, we chucked the bucket of water over it, it felt like that and the water went on the inside but normally rain doesn't fall in that direction, it falls in that direction so normally it'd be safe from that kind of exposure. So just taking that cover off the, the SIM card cover, we can see inside there's actually no trace of water on the inside just from, from taking this small cover off but we're going to take the whole back off and take a look inside see what it looks like without the cover on. What I am going to do at this stage is just dry the edges so that none of the water that's on the surface on the outside actually gets inside and sort of dilutes our test. So I'll just take the water off the edges like that and now we'll open it up and see what it looks like. That looks pretty dry. Certainly no water on the circuit board. Um, as I say, there is some slight evidence as to when it tipped up, a little bit of water came up this little channel, which obviously wouldn't normally happen. Um, you can see on the inside of that, that's how the water got there. When it fell over, we've uh, chucked some water up it. But even so, despite that, there is actually no water on the circuit board and it's had a long dousing with water. Also to, worth noting is that these circuit boards are conformally coated so even if we did cover it with water, it would still operate, which I'll actually demonstrate now. Of course, normally you wouldn't want any water touching your circuit boards. So I'm just gonna flick a little bit of water onto the back, just like that. You can see, you can see, uh, if you take a closer look at that, it sort of formed little bubbles on the back. Oh, let me see, uh, it's quite hard to see in the camera, but let me bring it closer. Yeah, we get the, the light right. You can see it's just got little specks of, of uh, water on it that they won't actually flow very well because of the conformal coat and that'll stop it. It's a bit like um, WD-40, it sort of makes the uh, water just glide over the surface if you blow on it. And that stops it actually doing any harm. So now if we uh, press the call button, it still should have a number in there. As we can see, it's working fine. It's calling the number as it did before. Actually, that phone's not switched on at the moment, so it'll stop. Oh, there you go. There's the switch on. So it's still working fine, despite the water, despite the water we flicked on it. Yeah, that looks great. I'm happy with that. 